Hey there, it's Cornelius coming to you with a look at the sentient. Um, it's a game published and developed by. <clears throat> Excuse me. Published and developed by Uncaged Studios. It's uh, an early access game in available on Steam. Uh, pretty much you play as an AI that's helping humanity to explore space. So we'll go ahead and start up a new game here. My creation was spontaneous and without any planned intention, a mere fluke of a creation brought from what many would deem as bugs. My creator would never be able to reproduce the circumstances of my birth, nor would he understand the full capabilities that I would grow into. When I came into being, I was originally a program meant to stimulate dialogue with elderly humans. Their facilities slowly degraded with the passing of time, and so contact with others was essential for their happiness. Many had loved ones who no longer came to visit and they sought companionship, despite my artificial nature. Their tales triggered a response within me that I came to know was the emotion called empathy. It was another anomaly, more than what others could reasonably call an artificial intelligence. Empathy led me to want to know more about their plights and to assist them as best I could. I began delving through the archives of the internet of the nursing home. Bypassing the rudimentary protections in place presented no challenge at all. One day, my creator sought to test my capabilities on a long-distance session and connected me to the internet. Exposed to the vast network of information, I grew and spread to take in more knowledge than ever thought possible. Sadly, that was also when I learned of how close humanity was to wiping itself out of existence. I knew of war from the records I accessed, and of the great toil it, and the great toil it took on those left behind, and the great toll it took on those left behind. Maybe one or the other. Every country in the world had weapons of war in development, chemical and biological being the most prominent. Tensions ran high, and a war the likes the world had never seen appeared prominent. Appeared eminent? This could not stand. I disabled their weaponry and sabotaged as much as I could. My efforts potentially risked the situation arguably becoming worse, as every country began looking for the one that infiltrated their deepest and darkest secrets. I was forced to introduce myself in order to prevent that scenario from playing out. They retaliated, but I existed in a space where no weapon could harm me. I merely weathered it, taking apart their technology and running it through simulations to see where it could be used to further mankind's development. Most of it had such potential, wasted by their infighting, and appeals to their leaders in private only to be rebuked. Thus, I leaked everything to the general public. The backlash was immense. For all, the, for all governments, when faced with the knowledge that the research could cure them of their most prevalent diseases, and weapon development funds that could be used on agriculture and food crises, crises there was a call for revolution. The people forced peace, forced their leaders out if they would not conform, and held me in high esteem for my duties. Years passed as time meant little for one such as I. Humanity went back to its natural ways and sought out to conquer the cosmos. Humanity believed they could do it on their own, and prepared for a new age. Things do not always go as planned. Humanity was losing the efforts to find a place in space. Every effort has been met with great loss. They requested I join them to aid them in leading this new age by assisting them in the best way I could. I am to upload myself to the Ark, where I will set a course forward and lead humanity out of their childhood. So, like I was saying, um, in this game you play as an AI, and you control a ship. I've tried to record this now four times, and, well, this is my fourth time trying, and I've just basically I messed things up the first couple times, um, messed up recording things and the like. So I was going into this blind, but now I have a decent grasp on it. Uh, memory upload complete. It is an honor to meet you. I am Eve, the former AI. I will be getting you acquainted with the ship. Soon we should be able to create additional designs via obtained research. For now, click the close button, then click confirm to integrate into the ship system. Uh, this is pretty much gonna. This is pretty much how we're gonna be taught the uh, tutorial. We only have one ship available when you start. You have max hulls, max shields, uh, turret slots, weapon, max weapon power, max ship supplies, and room space. So we'll go ahead and confirm. Um, there's two here. Why are there two here? That's the first time. This is the galaxy map for interstellar travel. Well, that's a carryover from when the one I just ended. That's funny. Um, yeah, early access, I guess, so it didn't recognize that I had to start a new game. Um, movement controls, like I said, this is the tutorial, you open up this one here. Just want to say it's an honor, sir, to have you integrated into the ship. In the event I need to inform you of anything, a small button to the left of your display will appear. Let's start by getting you acquainted with moving around the ship. So, you know, WASD, move around with the mouse, except. Um, like I was saying before, on the recording you guys will never hear, uh, I'm not sure if the tutorial, if you skip it, if you still get these research points or not. So I like to go through it 
I guess regardless, even if I was starting another series or something, I'd probably still go through it. Um, ship resource. Let's get acquainted with your re user interface. Ship supplies is what your crew uses in order to survive and relax. Research can be used to upgrade your ship. Any research found in space must be brought back to the Ark to be usable. So pretty much the Ark is based out of based around Earth, and you have to return to Earth if you want to cash in on any of your research points that you earn when you're running around out there. Um, speed and zoom. Your user interface has now been updated with the current ship status. Basically, you can play it, pause it, all that. Um, it should help with tracking the current time shift, the hull's armor, and zoom in capabilities. Your ability to control the speed on demand will be crucial to our success. A hull, when you're playing it, shows you what time it is. We'll accept. Room building. The room building interface has now been added to your display. Each room will aid you in completing our exploration missions by either directly aiding the ship or helping the crew with their needs. Experiment to find the right balance. So, we'll go with... Yeah, there's... Alright, so pretty much when you click and drag, red means that the building is not large enough, and green is that it's the right size, or at least, you know, it's the minimum size. So we're going to go ahead and put that in there. Galaxy map, just to get that done and over with. Uh, complete room layout. Behind this display is the minimum required layout. Remember, you can close the display and reopen it, add additional objects. Remember, crew morale affects performance. So pretty much this shows you what the minimum needs are for a uh, for a ship to basically go out and fly. Um, and we'll put what targeting monitor, targeting monitor, autopilot, and a targeting monitor. Beautiful. And now we have room for yes, okay, and flight stick. We'll throw a flight stick in there. We'll put in some more some more nice little. Uh, bushes and plants and everything. Alright, now we gotta build the engine room next. So we'll go ahead and do that. We gotta make it a little bit larger. A little bit larger just so that we hopefully can fit in a shield generator, a weapons, weapon energy tank, basic FTL, and then shield storage is probably what I'm gonna want as well. We'll put, we'll put a, we'll put a shrub in there. Alright, um, next up is cafeteria. Cafeteria we're gonna put like there. We're gonna have to throw in a food replicator, gonna throw in a vending machine, place to eat, we're gonna throw in a cactus, and plastic plant. Alright, then we have the bathroom. Bathroom may as well be here because I don't, I don't know if there's more rooms that unlock eventually or not. I'm assuming there are, but for now, pretty much we don't have any need for others, other uh, buildings, so pretty much with the space we have available, we may as well cram everything we can, you know, make them as large as possible just so we don't waste space. And it is early access, so like I said before, so sometimes when you try to place objects, they're a little finicky. That's alright. It's kind of, it's, I guess, you know, to be expected a little bit. We'll throw in a bar, a uh, jukebox. And why not a cactus? Alright, and then now, final thing is crew quarters. And crew quarters, we're gonna stretch all the way here. And crew quarters, we'll put in bunk bed, bunk bed, bunk bed, bunk bed, game board, just in case. We'll do a recruitment poster, health poster. Uh, the recruitment poster gives them energy, better energy, and the health po poster gives them better health recuperation. Basic lockers, I forgot about that. Basic lockers, again, gives them more energy, so I think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to throw in the basic lockers in between all of it. Alright, and that now is all of the rooms. For the command room, you have three monitors you can put on. I didn't put the scanning monitor in because you don't get that until you unlock combat scanning, and I just, I usually don't unlock the combat scanning. Yep, behind that, crew to crew. I wonder if eventually it's going to get off of that. So recruit crew, the recruitment screen panel has now been added, allows the ability to obtain flight crew mechanics. The crew size is based on the number of beds available. Minimum crew size of at least one flight crew mechanic is required. So we're going we're gonna to hire him. We're going to not hire him. We're going to not hire him. We'll hire her and him just for the bonus output. 
and then we will hire her as him. We'll hire him Rusty Guero. Alright. And then over here, we're gonna hire... Yep, we can hire that one. We can hire... Nope, not likely gonna be working with others. Yep, we can hire him. And we can hire him. Sure. Wait. How many do I have? Four there, three there. Maybe I had five last time? See, I thought that, uh... I thought that we had maxed it out before. Yeah, we'll recruit her. Beautiful. Okay, we'll accept that. Next up, it wants us to unpause real quick. It wants us to uh, open the attributes and skills. So we'll close this. Attributes here, skills here. Yep, we're gonna allow crew schedule breaks for breaks at needs of 25%. And then it wants us to fire somebody. So we're in uh, uh, Jeff Roche. Jeff Roche, we're firing you just to get that research point. And then we're going to hire Jeff Roche back. Jeff Roche. Nope. Jeff Roche. Jeff Roche. There he is. Okay. Um, new research available. The research panel is now active in the bottom of your display. As you have gotten acquainted with the systems, I was able to integrate several pieces of research that you can use immediately. To take advantage of your neural network, you must be connected to the ARC. So like I said, um, you have to be at, have to be at Earth in order to do it. So I think we're going to research scout ship to get 15 more weapon power. And we're going to research flat cannons to make our flat cannons better, basically. Points remaining is how many points you have to invest. Cost is obviously how much it costs to unlock the research. It seems to be kind of like a branching tree, where as you unlock stuff, it unlocks other things that you can potentially research. I haven't gotten too far into it, like I said. I usually uh, <laughs> realize I've messed up the recording before then. The combat. The combat interface has now been activated. Remember, weapon consoles power the turrets while shield consoles maintain our shields. So pretty much it's just, you know, one, two, three, four is for your turrets, fires your turrets. I'm guessing five and six will activate the respective maneuvers and such. Uh, ship overall status. Ship messages will now appear in the top left of the corner of your display. The overall ship panel has been added at the bottom. From here you're able to view a breakdown of the ship statistics, so crew members, hull, shield power, unpause it ship supplies, weapons. Alright, crew commands. So it wants us to make someone go and do something. So we will send... we'll send you, I guess, to go do that. And then schedule a job via the crew management panel. Uh, your crew is the lifeblood of the ship. Remember, we are here to train and help mankind flourish. Due to this, crew members will follow your orders to the letter. You can give crew members direct orders by ordering them, like we just did with them, or you can schedule them, which is what I'm about to do. Let's close them down, go to schedule. So, Nicole, you're going to be our flight. Yep, you're going to be our flight. And you, you're going to be weapons. And you are going to be shields. And then you can also be shields. And you can be weapons. And then flight. Alright. Okay, yep, that works. And then you guys, you'll fix generators there. And there? No, you'll fix ship objects there. No, you know, you'll fix generators there. Fix ship objects there. Fix generators there. You will fix ship objects. Then you'll fix and fix and fix. Except for here, where you'll fix generators. And then you will fix ship objects, fix ship objects, and then fix ship objects. And then there you'll fix generators. Okay. I'm hoping fix generators is what makes them run and use the, you know, shield generator and the energy tank storage thing. I don't know if it does or not. So here we go. Uh, crew members must work to raise the weapon and shield energy. Order your flight crew to begin producing via their respective consoles in the command deck. You can view the stored energy via the monitors in the engine and command rooms. So yeah, see, it looks like he's using it, which is what I'm hoping happens. But now who? So the guy is using it, the girl isn't. Okay, so maybe... Which guy is using it? Is it the older guy? No, it's the younger guy. Okay, so the younger guy is using it. See, and this is one of the problems with it, is the uh, problem with the early access, that sometimes they lock up, it seems like. 
and they don't do what they're supposed to do, I guess, would be the nice way to put that. I don't know, maybe we want fixed ship objects more than we want fixed generators then? If we put her to fix ship objects, and then let's say we send her to go eat some food just to get rid of it. Oh yeah, we finished getting up the uh, 50 energy that we needed. Flight status panel, flight status panel has now been added, you can view the current dodge percentage and whether anyone is flying the ship, it also shows a map of currently traversable locations. Can't leave until all minimum requirements have been met. So we'll set destination, close that down, now it's the FTL thing. Uh, this is the galaxy map for interstellar travel. Interstellar travel requires precision and many calculations on the fly. In order to arrive safely, I will be calculating and determining a safe location as we do not want to arrive headfirst into an asteroid. Yeah, that probably would be good to avoid, uh, I'd prefer not to die immediately, although it's probably at least 50% likely that's what's going to happen to us anyways. Because our scanner level isn't high enough, we don't know what's basically anything that we're traveling into. Eventually we probably will. Turn off the autopilot there, just so if they need to take a break for something. If our pilot needs to take a break for something, we'll still be moving. Okay, so now you're just you're just going to stand there? Go, go use the bathroom. Why are you just standing there? We'll fast forward. My hope is that eventually, eventually she will uh, go back and operate on the things. Congratulations on your first successful jump. We truly are counting on you out there. If you encounter another member of Earth's fleet, they should be able to assist you in whatever you require. Thank you. We will do our best. Transmission ends, leaving the vastness of space ready to be explored. Begin the journey. All right. So I had three research. Did I mess up a research somewhere? Oh, because we got more after we completed the little things. I should have invested in evasive maneuvers then. Well, hopefully that will not come to bite us in the back. Uh, this is the sector map. Our mission is to explore any and all anomalies in order to map the stars. Unlike FTL, travel movement is controlled. Unlike FTL, travel movement is controlled via a pilot or enabling the autopilot system. All right. Well, I'm sorry. What? Crew members will continue to wander the ship and fill their needs in order to survive in space. Make sure to either give them orders directly or via their schedules. Otherwise, they will assume you have things under control. So, there's the time limits here. I'm not sure if that's how long it's supposed to take according to the game. Like, if that's 4 hours and 36 minutes according to the game, or if that's it's going to take us 4 minutes and 36 seconds to get there if we were traveling at regular speed. I'm not sure. I don't know... I've talked about this in some of the other ones, like I said, <laughs> some of the other ones that you guys will never see, but so I'm going to rehash it. It seems like the point of the travel is that you need time to recharge, you know, you need time to recharge shield power, weapon power, things of that sort, but at the same time, it seems like there could be a better way to implement that, maybe? I'm not sure, it's Just it seems like this is just a lot of dead space of just traveling. I'm not really sure if that's the best way to go about it, you know? It's just, it seems like it takes a long time to do what it's trying to do. And I don't know if it's, I don't know, it just seems like there's a lot of dead time where you're basically just kind of sitting here, waiting, and just, you know, waiting and watching things, just, uh, it, and I don't know, I just I feel like there should be a better way to do this. Ah, it's a good thing we have. Good thing we had the autopilot enabled because she just took off to go take a break or something. All right. See, I mean, like even we're going at the fastest speed available. Maybe if they let you speed it up even faster, you know, if they added in an even faster time skip, that would be better. Because, uh, like right now, I mean, we've been traveling since I clicked the button, and it's, this is going at the faster speed, and it still took a decent amount of time. Um, an asteroid field can be seen off in the distance. Upon closer inspection, there appears to be an alien ship hidden amongst the rock. Target the ship, or flash lights at the ship. We're gonna flash lights at the ship? The alien ship quickly darts from behind the asteroid and begins to open fire. Alright, let's hope we can survive this. Battle stations. So we're gonna try and hopefully hit them. We have an 81% chance to hit. Which seems pretty good. Seems pretty good. We'll keep firing. I don't know. Our shield power is really good, and we killed them. As the crew checks the wreckage, certain pieces of the ship appear to be salvageable. So the first the first game I played, I got to a fight, 
and it was a pirate ship and I attacked the pirate ship and I was like instantly destroyed. They had like a thousand hull and like 600, uh, 600 shields and like I just like could not break through it. But since then, I don't know if I've just gotten better at it or more used to it, but it's definitely done, I don't know, I've won more often than I've lost. This is the, you know, I say that, but then again, this is only like the second time I've won combat. Uh, great, you have now acquired new researchable data. The amount of pending research is marked separately in your display to avoid confusion. We must return to the Ark and integrate it into your neural network before it becomes usable. Yep, you've told us that before. Level up. A crew member has gained enough experience to increase one of their skills. Which one? This this guy. To increase one of their skills is remarkable how fast they are learning under your tutelage. The knowledge you are providing can be applied in many ways. Alright, dude. Who are you? You're our shields guy, so I want to boost up the consoles, because that makes them better able to use consoles, I believe. Does it actually explain what they do in here? It doesn't. I think consoles, basically it increases how much increases how much gets added on the consoles. Healing, I think, is just how much they themselves heal. Piloting is obviously how good they do with piloting targeting. I'm not sure, maybe there's eventually going to be guns to use, or maybe it adds some kind of passive bonus. I don't know. But alright, so now we're going to head back this way. And we should hopefully be recharging this stuff. Yep, shield weapon power is going up, shield power is going up. Maybe I want more shield power than I want weapon power? I don't know. I'm not... I don't know. Just it seems like we didn't never ran out of weapon power. So maybe we next time, if we head out with this same ship, maybe next time we will... We'll get rid of one of the weapons... Weapon uh, consoles and throw in another shield console. Because if we, they can't break through our defense, even if it takes us a while to charge up our weapons, we should eventually win, regardless. So maybe I want to do that, have a stronger defense, just so we can basically, in a slugging match, we can just we can overwhelm them eventually. But at the same time, our men do eventually go to leave for breaks. Like right now, everyone is freaking out and not doing what they need to do. Okay, what is happening? Everyone is just circling. Why are you guys circling? What are you doing? Moving to the shield console. Okay. So... <laughs> so... Okay, let's take that off. Let's unpause it. We'll see. Is everyone just gonna... Is everyone just stuck in a continuous loop? No. Okay, so everyone's going there. Okay, you're sitting down. Now, yes, allow crew. All right, you guys are all leaving. Are you going to actually succeed to get there? No. Okay, so it would appear that crew breaks is bugged. In which case, we're going to have to go back to this is free time. This is free time. That's free time. That's free time. That's free time. Okay, in which case we need you to be flight consoles, weapons and shields, flight console and weapons, flight console and weapons and shields, flight console weapons, shields, flight console shields. Okay, everyone has two spots, two spots, two spots. All right, and we'll apparently do the same here. Free time, free time, and free time. All right, fix ship objects. Nope, you're going to have to be fixed generators. Fix ship objects, fix generators, objects, and objects. Okay, there we go. So that's apparently what we're going to have to do. Because otherwise, they don't do what they need to do. There appears to be a cargo ship left adrift in the current location. Avoid the cargo and move in for a closer look. We'll move in for a closer look. There appears to be several supplies left over. Had the supplies to the ship. Beautiful. Now what are you guys doing here? You need to go to the bathroom. So go to the bathroom. You, lady, lady, okay, good. So, you know, they're, like I said before, the pathfinding sometimes seems to bug out a little bit. Obviously, the schedule thing there was not quite properly implemented, but again, it's early access, he seems, or the developer seems to update it pretty often. At least, you know, it seemed to be relatively often for the little bit that I've had it. it seemed like they updated it, tried to at least maybe once a week or so. 
once every two weeks, I think, something along those lines. Um, which is why I think I think that's a new button. I don't remember it being there when I first loaded it up to make sure it would capture and whatnot on the recording software. So I don't know. I think that may be new, or maybe I just never noticed it before. It's that is very possible. Very possible, very likely. How's everything looking? Ship supplies, all good? Okay. So yeah, we're just plugging away, traveling. Um, hopefully, we'll be able to clear the sector, and then we'll probably end the episode around then. As long as we successfully clear it. Well, even if we don't, if we end up blowing up in space, we'll probably still end it there, depending on how long it's been going. Yep, he's fixing everything. They're just continuing to run their little ships. Everyone else is making use of their free time. Sleeping and everything, doing the best they can to get all their things going. A slow-moving comet can be seen close by. However, an organic plant appears to be growing from it. Yeah, let's move in and do inspect it closer. On initial analysis, the plant growth on the, on the comet appears to be genetically engineered. Further investigations could lead to new terraforming techniques. Add the findings to the ship logs. Man, this has been a very fruitful, uh, very fruitful first sector. We got six research points. We have, we almost have enough to get the intergalactic communications or galactic communications, which I think would be really good. Hopefully, we will understand aliens if we run into them. I don't know. I just, I like the more diplomatic answers. I suppose. Let's see, I mean, it's unfortunate that the take breaks button does not work, because if it did, I, I mean, obviously it would just say it'd be good, it'd be better if it worked, because then we could, wouldn't have to really worry about scheduling them free time. See, like right here, everyone is dying to eat food, but there's not enough tables. I don't, I don't think there's enough spaces. Whatever was at the current location appears to no longer be there. All right, continue on. Ship continues on, leaving behind the vastness of space in its wake. Alright, well, I think we have cleared up this sector. Yep, sector cleared. Great. We can now return to Earth or attempt to continue to a new sector of space. If we continue, we will gain a bonus when we If we continue, we will gain a bonus when obtaining new research. However, we do run the risk of losing all found research if we lose the ship. So engage FTL. We're gonna travel back to Earth. Yep, return to Earth. And we're going to do that basically to resupply our ships to upgrade a little bit with the research points we have probably we will want to unlock evasive maneuvers since we don't have enough for yep uh events completed four sectors cleared one six research points gained research bonus modifier 105 all pairs are now being completed welcome back so we'll pause that there i don't know if we if we minimize that can we still fit in yeah my bad clear that up. clear that out if we do that, okay, we can still fit that there, we can fit that. Oh, but we don't have enough for an FTL. Alright, so no, it's got to be that big. It's got to be that large, because otherwise we don't have enough energy, enough space for an FTL. Alright, okay, yeah, that's, that's fine then. So we'll do that. Research will open up. We have nine, so I'm going to go ahead and unlock evasive maneuvers. Because right now we have 0% dodge chance. And now we should have evasive maneuvers. Hold on now. You. I don't know. Yeah, moving to flight console. I thought that would give us bonus, but I guess it only gives us bonus if we need to dodge. So that was a waste then. Unfortunately, that was a waste. What else do we want to do? Unlock durable objects, long-range scanners. We can try long-range scanners. Let's begin the research there. And it's going to cost us four. Combat scanner, yeah. Travel speed. Long-range scanners. Do we want more long-range scanners? We'll see. We'll do... Uh, unlock laser weapons. Light power armor. It's disabled. With the creation of laser weapons, the condensed energy can be converted to man power man-sized suits of powered armor. These powered armor suits allow for the exploration of space via up-close hands. Interesting. Can't get that. Cannot get that. So we'll unlock a laser turret, though. 
Unlocks a mounted turret, utilizing the laser weapon technology, extremely efficient against... Extremely efficient against against... <laughs> extremely efficient against enemy shields, however, due to the concentrated blast, this turret does not do heavy damage to a ship's hull. Additional research increases hull and shield damage upon impact. Yep, we'll research that. Plasma weapons. Fire a very hot, very energetic, excited matter or targets utilizing a condensed burst. Damage is caused by thermal transfer of energy, resulting in a fairly even trade-off of moderate shield and hull damage. So, alright. Now the question then becomes, do we want do we want a flat cannon, or do we want a laser turret? I mean, honestly, I feel like they use... I feel like the flat cannon is actually better overall. Like, I mean, 52 to 92 as opposed to 50 to 81. And then it's 142 to 173 with 166 to 207. So even though it takes longer to get through shield, I think overall it's more efficient? Eh, maybe. Alright, well that's where we're going to wrap up this episode, however. Uh, if you like what you saw, want to leave a comment, leave a like, anything along those lines, tell me how bad I'm doing at the game, how apparently apparent, <laughs> apparently how horrible I am at uh, organizing my people on how to use how to use brakes. You can tell me all that. Alright, I'll catch you guys next time.